I don't like cats. I don't need it. I know my cats on the right. talking about uh, hacking our teams, flexible development, flexible agile development uh, at the Wikimedia Engineering, uh, in, sorry, in the Wikimedia Engineering Department. Um, so uh, first I'm going to give a little bit of uh, definition or introduction of oh, 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 oh. 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 Uh, 
the, 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 the most important one in my mind is the idea of working software being the principal measure of success. So we always use working software uh, as, as the proof is the, you know, the proof is in the pudding, right? So if we can deliver working software, that's our ultimate goal. Uh, another, another um, one of the most important of the Apple principles is really this idea of embracing change. Uh, like with the waterfall method, when you hand somebody a, a bunch of documents and say you've got six months to go, invariably at the end of that project, people are going to want to change things. So rather than looking at change as something that's evil, we want to embrace change because we know it's going to happen. So we uh, embrace change and actually try to respond to change as early in the software development process as possible. So we can constantly evolve, uh, we can constantly evolve the product as we're developing. Um, another, another set of the principles kind of talk about um, sustainability and simplicity. Um, the idea of sustainability um, for myself as an engineer is, is, is really important. I'm sure if there's any other engineers in the room, you've experienced the uh, mad dash to finish the last 80% of a project in the last 20% of time that we've got. And you wind up working weekends, you wind up working nights, um, and you just go at breakneck pace and you want to sleep the wrists. The idea uh, uh, in the Agile principle about um, uh, sustainability is that you can work indefinitely. You can work at a pace indefinitely. It's not just for the engineers. That, that is, uh, uh, should be embraced for people working on the product, for users, so on and so forth. The other idea um, about simplicity is that we like to maximize the amount of work that we don't do. So the more that we can simplify our lives, the more that we can simplify the product, uh, the better. Um, the next really crucial thing in my mind about Agile is the idea of empowering the team, empowering your engineering team. Um, and Actually, I guess by, by team, I don't necessarily just mean um, your software engineers, but we approach teams slightly differently. We uh, embrace cross-functional teams, so we view our team as being made up of software engineers, of product managers, of somebody from QA, um, or whatever. So the work and design, thank you. Um, and pretty much whatever you feel like, whatever roles you feel like you need in order to accomplish um, uh, your product at the end of the day. So our say team, we really mean this cross-functional group of people. And we make up this team with people that we trust. And we uh, put a lot of emphasis on that idea of trusting the team and giving the team the power to really ultimately define its own destiny. So the team puts a lot of effort into um, kind of shaping the process the team is going to work in, uh, potentially even uh, fueling discussion about how uh, the product should look and feel at the end of the day. So really, the, the, the team is not just a bunch of people you hand the requirements over to and say, okay, go sit in that dark room for six months and get it done. It's, uh, the team is a unit, a living and breathing thing that we invest a lot of trust into um, to ultimately come up with the uh, finished product at the end of the day. Um, the final thing I want to talk about in regards to the Agile principles is the ideas of uh, reflection and evolution. Just like we know that at the end of the six month project, uh, people are gonna realize, oh my God, like things need to change, we've got to go back and rewrite the specs all over again and rinse and repeat. We feel like um, that the product is a living and breathing thing, just like the teams. And as the product evolves over the course of uh, the development, um, the team does too, uh, at least when you're operating in a natural way. So um, taking a step, periodically taking a step back as a team and reflecting on the way in which you are conducting your work and giving the team an opportunity to say, man, I don't think that the way that we've been doing X, Y, and Z has been working out very well for us, um, is, a, is a really important and vital thing. And actually, not just giving the team the opportunity to hear their grievances, but also making sure that there's somebody uh, on the team who is capable of helping to resolve that issue and evolve the process, evolve the way in which you're doing things, evolve the way in which the team is working. Um, and I think that this actually also really comes back to the idea of sustainability. If you can continually evolve your team and the way in which you're doing things, you're going to be able to work in a much more sustainable way. Cool. So um, James, Sebrin, and Adrian, you guys want to come up? Um, and so now we're just going to chat uh, amongst the four of us real quick about um, 
uh, how our team has kind of embraced this idea of agile, um, why we do it, um, some of the things that we try to avoid, and some of the things uh, that are terrifying or, or, or that we worry about in this, uh, in this process. So first, let's chat about uh, how we work. I'll go first. So, uh, Visual Agile team has tried a lot of different things, and we've yet to find something that's totally accurate, um, which is the Agile way. Um, so, initially, we tried um, working just from Bugzilla. So, we would have lists of bugs, and people would work through them, and we'd have a, an hour long meeting every day. Sorry, how big is your team? Is Sorry, yes, good question. So, um, that is a time-dependent question. Um, right now, the team has uh, five full-time engineers, a half-time engineer, two engineers who work from here who um, help out with the core product, and that's on Visual Editor. And then Password Side right now has four engineers. Um, and then there's me as a uh, product manager. We have support, but no full-time assignment from design and, uh, and uh, data um, in the scenario, and then we also have um, a fantastic group of people who do community liaison and um, advocacy and management and interpretation, who number in total, total nine people right now. But I'm going to ignore all of the people who aren't engineers and visual editor team itself because um, we work in different ways, and I want to talk just about that one. Um, so we used to use just Bugzilla. So we would have everyone would have their own bit of Bugzilla they were responsible for, a list of bugs, and they were prioritized mostly by me. And we would go through them, start at the top, and work through them until we were done. And we didn't really like this. We felt this wasn't very good. So we switched to another tool called Mingle. And this is much more, you know, formal agile. It has story cards, it has points assigned, it has um, very little happiness from the team when we used it. They didn't enjoy writing up story cards, they didn't enjoy interpreting story cards, they didn't enjoy adding points to story cards, they didn't feel like it helped them work better, so we dumped the system. Because ultimately the purpose of the process is to write better code. And if the developers aren't happy enough to write better code, then it's not a system that should be um, We then moved to uh, another system which I've already forgotten, and finally we ended up doing what we drop right now, yeah, we used Trello briefly, um, and that was much simpler, but we still felt it was too heavyweight. So we've now got to the position where we have um, Google Docs and a list of a bullet, uh, list of bullet points with everyone's name above each list. Everyone has their own page, and um, at the top of the list is the most important thing in the work list. And I put things in the work list, and you strike them off when they're done. And occasionally we move them between different people's work lists, and we have a half-hour meeting every week to talk about the work lists and what isn't there yet and what needs to be um, related to our trajectory. And um, we have a five-minute stand-up every day where we're not needed. And that is it in terms of meetings. That is it in terms of management overhead. It's very lightweight, possibly a little too lightweight, but it works for now. Okay, don't have any questions. Let's, uh, let's do questions afterwards. So we'll, we'll chat about our team. Um, so, uh, hi, I'm Dietrich, product management analytics, and scrum management analytics. Um, right now, we've got three engineers, one DevOps guy, uh, so that's four, yeah, plus me is five. Um, we are slightly different than the other teams because I've got actually a portfolio of products to manage, and most of the product managers here have actually one major product. Nice, the visual editor, uh, language. Less single product. Sorry, sorry, sorry. But, uh, but yeah. there's an echo and it's so we need to talk about yeah. what we do apparently, but yeah, we'll figure it out. <laughs> and so initially we started more like where things ended. We got to like pretty much from the task oriented uh, way to mingle and we uh, assigned tasks in priority to different engineers. Um, the problem we, we discovered with that particular approach for us was that it was very hard to uh, maintain overview of how the tasks relate to each other and how they actually contribute to each other the product. And it's very hard to um, uh, interact towards our stakeholders and customers on the progress. So we have <coughs> introduced uh, in the team Mingle uh, back in February. And I 
that's why I disagree with James' assessment by the people. I think it's a tool that um, has its flaws, that just like any other tool. Um, I don't think engineers should spend too much time there. I think it's primarily a tool for the product manager and the scrum master. Um, so we use it, uh, I'm, I, I write a lot of the cards, the engineers area. I do most of the writing, um, and I only add, ask the engineers to read the cards, and that's basically it. They don't need to do a lot of stuff with the people. Um, when it comes to uh, the other artifacts that we have, we have an everyday stand-up. Um, our sprints are two weeks long. That means that at the end of the two-week cycle, we, uh, we have a sprint demo where we show our progress to our stakeholders. Does, does anybody not know what a sprint or an iteration is? Yeah, let me, yeah, this is like, no, oh, yes. There stays in mind, right? <laughs> <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> sprint is just a, a time box for, for development. And in our case, it, it depends on team. In our case, it's two weeks. So at the beginning of the sprint, we have a planning session where we discuss with the team jointly on what are we going to work on in the coming two weeks. We commit to that work, and at the end of the two weeks, we demonstrate our progress and, and, and show our customers uh, what we have done and ask for the feedback and for the sign off. And every sprint, then all we have this interaction point with our customers and give feedback. They can constantly steer how they do it instead of like the hardest thing like a waterfall, big spec, and then you start coding and see that you're done. And we have, you can talk to us very rapidly and we can constantly adjust our course to this being agile, I think. And we've got two more meetings. Um, it's called backlog, backlog grooming. So a lot of people with finance. Grooming has a negative connotation. Which is why it's not like Well, this is also why I refuse to cut my hair. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's, as I said, like, you get a lot of feature requests coming in from different customers, for different products, and we need to manage them, right? We need to kind of um, let's see. Um, do the analysis on the cards, like do we understand what the customer wants, if not, we need to spend some more time with the customer talking about it. And then once the card is fully spec'd out with all the criteria, we estimate uh, and we think how much how complex is this card going to be. Those are I think the, all the artifacts that the internet is going to work on. Um yeah so I'm Sigal uh, Maasland I work for the community foundation primarily as a as a product manager and of the master on the team. We uh, currently have four developers, uh, a designer, and uh, someone for communications, and me, so there's seven people and in total just a little under six full-time equivalents. Um, uh, and no one lives within 500 kilometers on each other. So we have, I live in the Netherlands, um, we have a developer in Finland, we have uh, a designer in Spain, developer in Israel, and uh, we have two developers in India, but that's a pretty big country, and um, a third uh, person, Runa, also lives in, in India. Um, uh, accounting, uh, uh, an engineering manager in, uh, in San Francisco, our team spreads two and a half hours of time zones, um, so when it's 8 in the morning uh, in San Francisco, it's uh, 8.30 in the evening uh, for everyone in India. And these things pose specific challenges, uh, not only in time, but also how we see each other. Um, so we see each other uh, using uh, uh, tools uh, like Google Hangout. Um, our, uh, our daily stand-up is on Google Hangout. I think Peter exists too. I don't know if yours is too. And uh, Arthur also, uh, I'm the only one that works remote in your team, right? Uh, no, no, we have people who work at least regularly. Everybody works in order some So it, it's interesting that, that, none of, that, that it wasn't mentioned yet, but we heavily rely on the internet also for our communications. Um, uh, we also have a living room in, in our team, uh, we call it Skype, um, uh, where we have a persistent chat. Uh, so um, uh, because um, someone may have al almost ended their day, and when I get up in the Netherlands at uh, 8 or 9, um, uh, the people in India have been working for four and a half hours already. They've been talking to each other and, and type that, that stuff. So I read the, the, uh, the scroll back to see if there's anything that I need to respond to, if there's any questions, and uh, we all do that. 
uh, like uh, Dirk, we work in uh, uh, two three sprints. We use Mingle, um, and uh, yeah, we have uh, a fairly large, um, sometimes ill-defined uh, board portfolio. portfolio. We, uh, we intersect with platform engineering when it comes to the uh, to the media wiki internationalization framework. Uh, we're developing features when when it's about uh, something like universal language selector or uh, uh, translation notifications or uh, the Babel extension or the CLDR extension, which is also a platform, I guess. Um, uh, uh, when we go when we when we're going to do uh, to work on uh, on the content uh, translation uh, feature, we're going to have a lot more interfacing with communities because we're actually going to uh, directly facilitate uh, the content creation. And because things like machine translation are going to enter the arena, uh, we have to be very careful to not overwhelm existing communities with an influx of content, uh, things that happened uh, in the past in certain projects. Um, uh, 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 something that Dirk mentioned, um, uh, the, uh, the sprint review, uh, and, and that being public, we did that for a while, um, and we got, uh, basically until about a year ago, I think, we got very little uh, involvement, and we put in a lot of effort into uh, making a, a, a proper demo. We recorded, we recorded them, and we converted them to the performance, etc. But we only saw one or two people actually in our meetings, and we got very little feedback. We do monthly office hours, and we have monthly bug triages. Um, and we feel uh, we uh, we noticed that uh, uh, it's really hard to, to, to get people uh, to get people people uh, get feet moving and and actually uh, participate. Maybe. Maybe it's because we don't focus enough. I don't know. That's what we're going to consider. And like make things smaller so people actually understand and try to uh, pull people in individually because we have identified them and say, oh, well, uh, this is going to be your uh, opportunity to, to, uh, to join. And uh, uh, Amir Aharoni is the new Scrum Master of our team. Uh, or is the new Scrum Master on our team starting Tuesday. <laughs> um, yeah, and um, yeah, I guess that's what I have to add. Cool. So I'm Arthur Richards. Uh, sorry, I forgot to introduce myself earlier. I'm the Scrum Master on the uh, mobile web team. Um, we focus on uh, developing the mobile version of Wikipedia and so on and so forth. Um, and uh, by the way, I also realized we didn't really introduce what a Scrum Master actually is. <laughs> uh, but the, oh, yes. the, the idea of the Scrum Master, uh, at least that role, person operates in the Scrum Master role is really responsible for uh, managing the process of the team and evolving the process of the team, making sure that the team um, is, uh, is also able to continue moving forward as quickly as they can and in a sustainable way. So it's really enforcing um, an agile mindset on the team. So on our, on our team, uh, we operate primarily inside of the Scrum framework or, or a bit of a modified version of the Scrum framework that we've evolved as, uh, as, 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 as as we needed in order to suit our needs. Um, so the Scrum Framework is one of many different uh, sort of prescriptive ways of approaching software development, ideally to uh, help you embrace the actual mindset. Um, we also work in two week long iterations. So our, our, our development is time boxed inside of uh, two weeks. Uh, we have a list of sort of predefined work that we're gonna try to tackle in that two week long period. Um, and we try very hard not to introduce any change uh, during those two weeks. Um, if somebody has some new idea or whatever, cool, we write it down and we stick it in the backlog, and then as we're getting ready to work on an upcoming iteration, we might address it then. Um, so uh, restricting, so we still embrace change, uh, but we try to uh, restrict it around um, the periods in which we're actually heads down uh, getting stuff done. So a change doesn't have to be something that is uh, super disruptive on the team. Uh, but something that we can manage through the process. Can I quickly add one thing? So it's, it's about being agile, it's about, about like changing gently. It's not about erratic, like moving back and forth every day. Right? That's not the kind of change you're talking about. I think it's more like this kind of change. It's important. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 
Um, so we uh, try to approach the year uh, in a, from a quarterly perspective. We set quarterly goals for ourselves on the team um, and try to come up with the kinds of things that we want to achieve over the three month long period. Um, and so we sit down and do a great big long planning period um, and then chunk that work out over the course of the three months. Um, and that work may evolve and change. In fact, it always does change over the course of those three months. That's totally okay. Um, but at least it kind of gives us a rough framework within, uh, within which we can work. Um, and periodically we do what we call retrospectives on our team where we, we come together and sit down and talk about what's been working very well for us um, to make sure that we can keep doing those things that have been working well on our team um, and identify the things that have not been working for us. Uh, and then we prioritize all the issues that come up and try to figure out ways in which we can address those on our team, um, keep everybody happy and uh, moving forward. And we also talk about um, anything that puzzles us about the way in which we're working or the product itself or whatever. So it's a really great opportunity for us to kind of uh, check in with the team and evolve uh, the team as necessary. Um, and the last thing I just wanted to say is that, um, especially because we work in these short chunks of time and then we do really embrace change, um, we really embrace failure on our team. I think a lot of engineering teams tend to be really afraid of failing. Um, but I like to say that failure is always an option for us, um, especially because since we split our work out into such small, um, discrete things, it's always easy to um, evolve and make things better. So we use failure as a really great opportunity um, to learn about the product that we're developing um, and figure out what doesn't work so that we can change it very early on in the process. One of the really important things here is that the, the, over the lifetime of the project, the, the farther out you get, the farther you get uh, to completion, the cost of change also increases greatly. So if we can if we can catch things, something that's not going to work, something that's going to fail very early on, that's awesome. It gives us an opportunity to make a better product faster. <coughs> so I think that's pretty much it. I, I'm sure we have a lot more stuff we want to talk about, but we only have 15 minutes left. Um, is there anything else you want you guys wanted to add, or should we just uh, add expert Q&A? Yeah, sounds good. Cool. All right, thank you. Um, so I wanted to ask about what I understand is your special situation, which is not just traditional Scrum, where you know everyone on your team and you're inside a company, because you're not, uh, but rather how to work with an open source community, right? So the challenges are very different. You don't have a single boss you go to if you can't resolve a problem ultimately, but you somehow need to work with multiple, multiple stakeholders. Let's make me, let me make that specific for a product owner how do you balance requirements that you see, that the foundation sees with what the community kind of diffuse or defined community sees? For Scrum Master, what do you have if you have a problem because somehow someone who is not on your team, not being paid by you, uh, causes problems but is on your critical path and similar for engineering. So how do you work with an open source community? I think that's, that's, that's what I'm interested in. <laughs> uh, so, you know, from, from, from my perspective, the, 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 way, the, way, the, the framework in which we work, the Scrum framework on our team, is really just team specific for the people who are actually doing this every single day. Um, it doesn't really necessarily apply, per se, to uh, contributors, like people in the community who want to um, make changes to our software and help evolve it. But we always have bugs that need to be worked on. We always have new features uh, that we want to add, but uh, might not have the time to do it in an iteration or maybe something that's off in the future. So there's always stuff for other people to work on and we keep all of that stuff highly visible to the community so people can always cherry pick something they want to work on. Also, um, we uh, allow <coughs> ourselves time on the team to uh, review community contributions and interact with people in the community. Um, and those, those uh, interactions are really important not only for engaging um, potential contributors to the project, but also helping inform um, the evolution of our product. So the, 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 the specific framework in which we work, again, it's just really specific to our team, but we still uh, uh, are able to embrace the community. Uh, I guess I you had a question earlier. Oh, yeah, so, um, so uh, I started the company about two years ago with a little idea, and now I find that when I'm running it, um, Um, I'm glad to report that I found exactly the same product management that they have the same for me, which is the build of the Although the downside of that I found is um, to do this like that. 
So um, uh, in practical terms, that means taking some time out of each iteration. We do a one week long iteration of the learner um, to actually seriously consider technical debt issues. You know, have we actually built something that we can't maintain or that next year when we want to do this, which we know we're probably going to get around to, is going to be a problem. And that becomes um, partly in my duty um, as product manager to actually say, well, yes, but I owe it to myself in five you know, weeks time or five months time and owe it to other users um, to improve. Um, that's always easy to slip out of when you're running around fixing a bug or whatever. And um, uh, part of that is asking the team to back to me and say, hang on, what about this? This is more important. And um, I, I, yeah, in formal scrum, it's very, very bad to mix the two because it's very easy to um, uh, ignore the long-term goals in the short-term ones. But I think that both um, goals on the same project, which is the product and the team, should be the same thing, um, especially in organizations like ours where um, we don't have like a six months and then you're done, you share the product and everyone um, cashes in their options and goes elsewhere. No, I, I totally agree with, with James. Um, if you want a truly successful product, you it needs to be grounded in the team and you, there's no point to bring the team to get an initial release and then you're, you're, you're done. So, um, yeah, I think that, I think, I think this long, long term approach um, is way for <coughs> addressing the, the between the roles. I think the tension is less of the issue in smaller teams. I can imagine the teams grow, it becomes harder and it also becomes easier to separate them. Um, so I can imagine that in the analytics team in the future, when once you get to meet certain size, we will split it up. Um, yeah, the long term and the small size makes it manageable. Um, yeah, I, I, I noticed the same uh, potential that uh, Edward Parker and, and James mentioned. Um, I, I think that the team can protect itself to a certain extent uh, from that conflict of interest by having a, having a definition of plan that prevents some of those things. Uh, the concept wasn't mentioned yet. It's not a formal artifact, in, in at least not in, not in Scrum, but a definition of plan basically is a description of uh, what things have to be accomplished with regards to the feature or something that the development team delivers that before it can actually declare something that's done. Uh, if the team thinks that, uh, for example, tests should be part of the deliverable, you cannot say that you have delivered it if there are no tests. Um, and uh, yeah, so, so as a, as a Scrum Master product owner with a conflict of interest, I can scream and yell and pull, but as long as the team hasn't had the time to actually implement the tests, then we can not rely. And one last thing I would like to say about that is I, I think that um, we have actually been able to increase our velocity and capacity and sustainability as a team by having those roles be very separate. As a Scrum Master, I mean, I can definitely say it's, it can be a full-time job. I mean, I spend a vast majority of my entirely uh, Scrum Master related duties. And having all of those responsibilities on my shoulders really frees up uh, Mariana or, or Keenan, uh, who's going to be the product manager, um, really frees them up to completely 100% dedicate themselves to uh, shaping the product. Um, I think we have time for maybe one last question.
but you cannot say what will happen with every three to four, four stories because they are not the same size. And if you waste too much time estimating them, it smells like this insufficient analysis and insufficient statistical criteria. Your stories may not be. Yeah, they're not. Yeah, they're not ready to be estimated then. So they should, they, they should be sent back to the product manager or this analyst to, uh, to spread them out in more detail or just to come up in, in smaller stories. But personally, I do not agree with this estimation. Uh, so I think that, I mean, one of the great things that estimation gives you is uh, a certain amount of predictability and transparency into um, how, how, how much work you can actually accomplish in the so if there's another way that your team can figure those things out and still provide predictability and still be able to say, okay, we think we can uh, accomplish this amount of work in this amount of time, then awesome. But uh, for us, estimates are incredibly valuable for you because that works. So, okay, so actually, you know, I think we said last question. I'm going to ask, but we can be able to ask that. Yeah. 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 Um, some of us will be happy to talk about that afterwards. Um, so the last last thing, um, especially for folks who are from the Wikimedia Foundation, uh, who are operating the Scrum Master role now, or uh, might find or think they might find themselves in the Scrum Master role, we're going to do a quick meetup um, from one until two. So now until two in room Y five. And you have lunch at the same time, so we've got to get a plate and bring it up over there. Thanks a lot, guys.